Dear GCM family, this is Pastor Ben, and this video is for Wednesday, November the 18th. We will be having fried chicken along with baked beans and potato salad and bread uh, for dinner tonight in the Fellowship Hall beginning at 5 o'clock. And of course, we'll have bread and desserts available there for you to take home as well. We have a distance seating and outside seating available as well. And then service begins in the sanctuary at 6.30 tonight. Now, uh, before I get into this week's Five Minutes for Your Faith, let me say a quick word. Uh, last Wednesday, November 11th, I did a video and I did send it out through text as I normally do. And it looked on my phone as if everything was going fine. But then as I've discovered later, uh, my wife wasn't getting my text and I assume a lot of others weren't either. Um, somehow, I think through the course of the storm, uh, Ada, Ada, my uh, ability to send text. So I uh, got my hold of my cell phone company and they're supposed to have it fixed soon. But uh, this video is being recorded the Tuesday night of the 17th. So you might be getting this video through uh, my wife's uh, cell phone number today. So we hope to get that fixed on my end real soon. They're working on it. All right, today's five minutes for your faith is on the subject of God Speaks. I teach, uh, most of everyone who gets this video would know that I teach seventh grade math, and I'm teaching some classes face-to-face -face there at the school, and some classes I'm teaching through Zoom. Zoom is basically where you teach through the computer, and I see my students kind of like on a Brady Bunch screen in their own little corner videos. Well, if the students don't turn on their video a camera where I can see them, all I see is a black square. And if I try to send them a message or an email and they don't respond, I see that black square, but I don't know if they're there, if they don't speak or communicate to me in some way. You know, there's some people that feel the same about God. They say that God never speaks to them. Now, I don't know what they're looking for. I think they're looking for some voice booming out of the sky saying, this is God speaking. I don't know. But scripture tells us that God does speak. That God speaks through what theologians call uh, natural or general revelation through creation and conscience. Psalm 19 says that the heavens declare the glory of God and that they declare the handiwork of his power. That is, when you look up into the sky, no matter where it is you're on the face of this planet, no matter what your background or your language, that the heavens, the creation itself, you look, and to those who do not suppress the truth and unrighteousness, they can tell there is a God. No matter what a person speaks, again, their language, they look up into the sky, they see a sunset, they see a sunrise, they feel the breeze upon their face. They see the splashing of the ocean waters. And they who are simply open to receive know that there is a God. God also speaks through general revelation, through what we call conscience. Conscience comes from two words, literally meaning with knowledge. Con with science, like gnosis, with knowledge. And the book of Romans will tell us that even people... Uh, Gentiles who did not have the Old Testament, Paul will tell us in the book of Romans that they know that there is a law and that there is a lawgiver because when they violate that law, when they think a thought they shouldn't think or say a word they shouldn't say or do an action that they shouldn't perform, that something inside of them will let them know that there uh, is a wrong that has been done. And if there's a wrong that has been done, there must be a law. And if there's a law, there must be a lawgiver. And a lawgiver means that there is a God. Now, true, an individual or a society can suppress the truth and unrighteousness to where that conscience becomes seared as with a hot iron. But God has implanted inside of each and every person a conscience that to varying degrees knows when there is something that has been done wrongly. They know there's a law. They know there's a lawgiver. God speaks through conscience. Of course, the main way that God would speak to us, the primary way for us as believers, as we know scripture tells us that the word of God, the Bible, is God speaking to us. Second Timothy chapter 3 uh, tells us that the scriptures give us the wisdom that's necessary to lead us to salvation. 
In other words, someone can know through creation there's a God. Someone can know through conscience there's a law. There's a law giver and know that they have broken the law. But only scripture will give us that knowledge that lets us know that we've all sinned and fallen short. And there is one way of salvation, and that is through Jesus, who is the way, the truth, the life, and through whom no one will come to the Father except by him. So scripture gives us a knowledge that leads us to salvation in 2 Timothy chapter 3, the end verses of that chapter will tell us as believers that once we are saved, that scripture also uh, it, uh, is, all of it is inspired, literally God breathed, and that it is profitable to train us, to correct us, to rebuke us when needed, and to train us in righteousness that we might be adequately equipped for every good work. So God does speak. He speaks through creation. There is a God. He speaks through conscience. There's a law. There's a lawgiver. We've broken the law. He speaks through his word to let us know that there is salvation only found in Christ and that we need to repent of sin and put faith in Christ alone for salvation. And then as believers, his word speaks to us to equip us, to train us, to uh, correct us and equip us for every good work. I'll close with this illustration. I had a parent conference a week or so ago, and in that parent conference, it was through one of these Zoom meetings as well, where me, us teachers and the parent were not in the same room, but we were through connected through computers. And one of the uh, complaints that the parent had was that in their mind, the teachers had not uh, communicated to them that their child was failing and failing to a very bad degree and wasn't doing hardly anything even hardly showing up for the classes through computer like he's supposed to. Well, as a teacher, I knew that was not correct. I had sent multiple messages through our school messenger system that the child had been failing. I had sent at least three myself. I'm sure the other teachers had done the same, but I was the teacher representative in this particular conference. So I uh, gently, but yet uh, with uh, conviction, let the parent know that we had indeed communicated and it was documented through our school messenger system. It's a message, It's a system we have there at school that keeps track of these sort of things. And I let her know, we have indeed communicated and it's documented. Thank the Lord for documentation. It didn't have to take my word for it. I can tell you, there are many people that will stand before God and will say, God, you never spoke to me which he could reply, have you ever seen a sunrise? Have you ever seen a sunset? They might say, God, you never spoke to me. He might say, have you ever known inside that what you did was wrong? God, you never spoke to me. Have you ever heard a preacher get behind a pulpit and open up to some passage such as John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's documented God has spoken. There might be a believer that would say, uh, well, I didn't grow as much in Christ and I've got a lot of wood, hay, and stubble here instead of gold, silver, and precious jewels which to lay at my master's feet. God, you should have spoken to me more. And he might say, have you not had the scriptures? Have you not had the church? Have you not had brothers and sisters? Have you not availed yourselves of these various uh, means of which God speaks? And God does speak. He speaks to unbelievers. He speaks to believers. And it is well documented. So I encourage you, if you know not Christ today, God is speaking. We've all broken his law. Repent and put your trust in him. If you are a believer, be a workman who is in the word of God that needs not be ashamed, but rightly handles the word of truth because God is speaking. God has spoken. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. May you know it is the hope you're calling of God in Christ Jesus and the surpassing greatness of his power extended to all who believe. And I will tell you at the end of this message, I'm also putting a link to last week's message from my wife's cell phone if everything works out. God bless you. Have a great evening.